What is poppin' fam? Spanik here, coach of your Alabama Crimson Surf. And this is Ice CBA week one against Leo and his Durham Dragons. Yes, that is the same Durham Dragons that won UCL season two. So congratulations to him for that. And you may notice this is a Wi-Fi league. Yes, it is. I still don't have a capture card. Shout outs to my boy Johnny GB, who is also the commissioner of this league for uh, for recording my battles. And also shout outs to shout outs to Bill who made my thumbnail. Well, he made the outline of the thumbnail. He made all the GFX for the league. Johnny inserted my picture. So props to both of them for that. They're doing a great job with this league so far. The GFX look amazing. Definitely check out the other coaches. Their links will be in the description below. And a lot of fantastic battlers in this league across multiple leagues. In fact, I look like an outcast compared to these guys. <laughs> I just look like some random nobody that just got in here. Because I see a lot of leagues on YouTube. That I see a lot of leagues on YouTube, and I'm part of none of them. None of them. This is my first league. I have been in a ton of different leagues, but none of them have YouTube recognition. This is my first league with YouTube recognition. So hopefully I could give Leo here a decent battle. <laughs> Show off some like amateur action right here. So now just a brief rundown of what I've brought against Leo to hopefully limit da to limit the damage. I have your Life Orb Faramosa because it really it really ripped a hole through his team. That and Lilligant together really rip holes through his team. Lilligant a little bit of a surprise there, mainly because his only grass resist that is not weak to ice as well is Bronzong, and he didn't bring it. So I could just spam Petal Dance and HP Ice on his entire team. Militech was there to deal at something like Conk or DD Haxorus. The, no, there's a Haxorus. No conk, though, really did surprise me, because that thing could have ripped a hole through my team. Stormy was an interesting set. Choice Scarf trick. Because with Choice Scarf, I either outspeed Haxorus a plus one, and I could uh, trick a Scarf onto his Bronzong or his Pikamuku. But I think I might want to keep the Scarf around, because he had Haxorus there. Muck was my Darkrai switch in. Just standard Spideff with the Gluttony Piggy Berry, the MG Special. And Tapu Koko was just... Tapu Koko was a weird set as well. It was an Assault Vest set. It was made to possibly take a hit from one of his special mods. Like, he could have had Thunder Asterion. He could have had, a uh, He could have brought Thunder Asterion. He could have brought, uh, Kunk Elder. Well, Kunk Elder's not really a special mod, but you know what I mean. Like, this thing could have been able to take a special hit from something. So that's my team. That's his team. Let's see how this battle played out. Let's see how this battle ended up playing... I actually forget what I lead, what I led with against him. It was probably my Fermosa. I can see myself leading with Fermosa. Oh yeah, this battle is being recorded from Leo's side because that's what the recording decided to do. So he decided to lead with, lead with the Queen, as I led with my uh, Fermosa. I was debating here to go for to go for Ice Beam and just be able to take out this Nita Queen, but I was afraid of potential Scarf or something, so I decided to click U-turn. And just, I forget what I go out into. This battle happened, like, as you can see, it happened on April 19th, and I'm recording this on the 25th. I decided to go into Starmie on his rocks. So now I think I scare, I think I would be able to scare him out here with a potential Surf, as he does reveal Black Sludge. I do decide, I think I click Surf here. I'm pretty sure I click Surf here. So he switches out into his, into his Haxorus. On my Surf, I am analytic on this Starmie. So this should have been able to do a ton of damage. And Surf there did a decent chunk. Not as much as I would like, but I am analytic boosted, so I could, that explains the chunk or whatever. As I decided to full switch my Militech. It was my dedicated switch to this thing, and I do have Ice Beam on this Militech. So that could have been to, mainly for the Axis, but he predicts that and doubles into his, I think that's Pikamuku? Yeah, it's Pikamuku. Yeah, this Pikamuku ended up being a giant threat the entire game. Pikamuku is really a scary mon. So I just go for the Toxic, because you don't know what it's going to do. I didn't know what this thing was going to do. So I just click Toxic, best neutral play. He didn't want anything Toxic. As he just Baton Passes for, for some sort of momentum here. Going into his Verizion. And now this Verizion, this Verizion gave me problems the entire game. I was expecting 
I don't know what I expected here. I stayed in expecting a close combat. Because I was running Calx, and I could take any hit, being that he was physical. And judging by that, it looked like he was physical, so... I think I just recover here. Yeah, I just recover. I should have maybe clicked Ice Beam, because I could have taken two close combats. So, misplay on my end. I, I should have just clicked Ice Beam. That could have gotten big damage to this Verzion, because it ended up being a giant threat for the entire game. So this Verzion switches out. He goes into back into the Pikamuku. Because the Pikamuku just walls my Miltic here. I think here I go for the Ice Beam. Yeah, I do. So now he knows I have it. Which is completely fine by me. This, because, I mean, obviously I had it. This thing was taking damage. This thing's not taking damage. I'm taking burn damage, but it's fine with the plus one defenses. I'll take that trade off. As now I switch out here, leaving to my Faramosa. Because this thing cannot touch me. He wasn't going for a Toxic there because I'm burned on my Militic. And he sets up a sub. And, oh no, he's sub-baton passing. He's gonna, he's, I thought right here I was getting 6 would So I was like, oh no, he's about to sub-baton pass into his Hydreigon, Dragon Dance, and just 6 me. So I go for Bug Buzz expecting that as he stays in. He stayed in probably baton passing, yeah. I go for Bug Buzz because I should have maybe went for U-Turn because U-Turn would have break would have broken the sub. And he would have been able to pass a sub. But then again, I also thought my baton, I also thought my bug buzz was gonna kill. So now he's just here, a Nido Queen behind a sub in front of my Faramosa. And this thing, this is a problem here. This Nido Queen is a problem. So I decided to U-turn out. Possibly gonna go into. Uh, I forgot what I go into here. I think I go into Starmie again. Yeah, I do go into Starmie again. Ex if it's lagging a little bit, excuse that. That's just uh, OBS being OBS. As he just decides to click Earth Power here. And that does a ton of damage. I was thinking he was offensive. I was thinking he was max special attack, max HP now. Judging by that Earth Power damage. So I just rapid spin away the rocks. Maybe not the greatest play on my end. I should have clicked Surf there. I am hindsighting 2020 right now. Because now I just sacked this Starmie, which could have potentially beaten a plus one Haxorus. I was so certain about the hack, but Dragon and Haxorus coming, because that thing could just mess up my team. So I go back into Moza here, because I'm, because I'm pretty sure a U-turn would be able to break the sub. So I do go for U-turn here, and I'm able to break the sub. I think I'm able to break the sub. I am able to break the sub, which is nice. Big life orb damage. I think he gets his rocks back up. Yeah, I go into Militech here, and I believe he gets his rocks back up. Yeah. So, that was definitely not the greatest idea, Rapid Spinning there. I should have just clicked Surf, and I should have broken the sub, and then gone to Faramosa and Ice Beams. I am hitting, I am getting Hindsight 2020 right now. So now he switches out into his Mew. Probably expecting a Scald. I think I do go for the Scald, yeah I do. Hopefully land a burn on the Mew. I don't get it. But that's act that's 100% fine. As now he switches out into his Verzion. Like I said, this thing was a giant threat. I switch into... Leaving a Muck. Yeah, I switch into Muck. GG, it's Envy. Now, I don't know quite what this Verzion is going to do. If he close combat it, I thought I could live it. But he ends up switching out into his Needle Queen again. I think I go for Gunk Shot here. Yeah, I do. Because I'm a man, I'm not afraid to miss, so I run moves like Gunk Shot. I did nothing. Of course, it does nothing. It's a Needle Queen. And this Needle Queen was a raging problem the entire game. He goes for Ice Beam there, possibly predicting, possibly predicting something. I forgot. I don't remember what it was though. Because I calced it, I could live in Earth Power if he was, because he wasn't Life Orb. I could have lived in Earth Power from that range. And been able to just get all my health back with the Figgy Berry and get rid of his... That's what he predicted with the Ice Beam, my Lilligant. So now I go into Lilligant, maybe thinking he wouldn't go for the Ice Beam. So yeah, he didn't go for the Ice Beam there. I go into my Lilligant, and I'm just able... To, now I'm just going to be able to click Sleep out of here, put something to sleep. He decides to put his Haxorus to sleep. 
but as you can see, I do go for the sleep powder, and I end up missing. I was actually wide lens to prevent sleep powder from missing. And the fact that I still missed is just a punch to the face. I should have just ended up running E-Belt. And now the Haxorus is asleep. Now see, now he's able to burn a turn there, so I'm only able to get one Quiver Dance off. So I do just set up the Quiver Dance there. Now I'm thinking I could just I could potentially just win here. Between because if he gets, I was thinking if he gets two turns of sleep, I just win here because I uh, yeah, I just go for the hidden power rise because it would have killed from that range if he wasn't a salt vest Haxorus. He was able to tank that because he was a salt vest Haxorus. That is that was a that's weird. We also also weird that I lived that. So I do go for another hidden power rise here because it will take out this Haxorus. And yep, Haxorus dies. So I'm not getting six would by Leo. Thank you, Christ. And now he goes into his Verizion. And this is why the Verizion was a threat. Quick attack. He had a tech that could have dealt with a potential Lilligan sweeping him or Feromosa sweeping him. Quick attack, Life Ward Verizion. What a guy. That's why he's that's why he was UCL season two champion. So I just go and tap the Coco here. I scare him out. I could out I had I scare him out and outspeed him. As I believe he just sacks his Pikamuku here. I think he just sacks his Pikamuku here. Yeah, he does. And I believe I click Dazzling Gleam. I did click Dazzling Gleam, so he just does sack his Pikamuku there. The the innards out's not gonna do any damage at all. Now here, I think he goes back in the Nidoqueen, because I have nothing I have nothing to hit this Nidoqueen with with Tapu Koko. I couldn't take a Sludge Bomb or Sludge Wave, even though I'm a Salt Vest. So I couldn't click Nature's Madness there. So I decided to just go for the U-turn. I decided to just U-turn out into my Militic. It's really my best answer to this thing right now. Oh, God. Nidoqueen was a problem for me. I don't know why I didn't prep for this thing better. So judging by that damage, I could take another Earth Power. If he has Thunderbolt, I've lost this game, and I've known that. So he doesn't have Thunderbolt because he switched there. Goes back into the Verizion. I believe I just recover. Yeah, I just recovered. Now here, I believe I just clicked the Ice Beam, but he reveals another tech that he had. He was a mixed Verizion. I didn't expect that at all. So now he's able to get back up to full. And, he, and even after Life Orb, he's going to be able to tank an Ice Beam. Because I was thinking he was going to go for Close Combat or Leaf Blade there. I could have taken both fairly well. And then Ice Beam would have done a... And then Ice Beam would have possibly done a lot more. The Militech's low. I just I know I could save this for Death Fodder. And potentially go back into Paramosa and be able to bring this back. So I just go out into Tapu Koko. As he goes for Giga Drain again, and that does a lot of damage. Even though I'm a Salt Vest, it does a lot of damage. The Salt Vest Tapu Koko was a good experiment in practice, but it really didn't work out for me this game. I think I just could Gleam here, actually. Yeah, he switches. Goes out into his Mew. And I'm able to click, uh, I think I click Gleam here. Yeah, I click Gleam. Does a lot of damage to this Mew. And at that point, I realize he's probably offensive in some way. So I just go for T-Bolt. Thinking he doesn't go Nidoqueen. As he just soft boiled. So he's, I was thinking he's probably offensive, judging by that damage. So I think I just U-turn here. Yeah, U-turn. So I U-turn here into my Alolan Muck. But, yeah, I U-turn into my Muck, I believe. Yeah, into my Muck. But he predicts that perfect. Does he predict that here? Or the next turn he predicts it? No, it was the next turn he predicted it. It was the next turn he reveals another tech. I just got straight up out prepped this game. You're going to see how I get out prepped now. He was will o on this Mew. That was the last thing I expected. I really didn't expect will o on his Mew. I just go for knockoff here. He reveals Colbert. That I saw coming, though. I thought he was going to be offensive in some way. I didn't think of the potential for will o -Wisp. I don't know why. 
Fly by Team's Ulti special, though. And now he just goes for Ice Beam. I think that was his only attack he did. The only reason I can see Willow as being handy is for my Dragonite, which I didn't bring this game. I'm able to pop my Figgy Berry. I go for the Pursuit here. I thought he was going to switch, so I just go for my Pursuit. This does nothing. I think that Burn my Muck sealed the game, though. Because there's really not a lot I can do here. Faramosa could still bring this back. But because I'm Life Orb, he could just really whittle me to the point where I get picked off by Verizion Quick Attack regardless. I need Verizion dead. So I decide here to just sack my Militic. And I decide to sack my Militic to be able to get the free switch into my uh, Faramosa. And now it's time to just Ice Beam Spam and Fray. That's really my only win count here. Ice Beam Spam and Fray. He's going to go into his Dark right here because he really didn't need it this game. He knows his win cons are Izzy on 100%. So he just goes into his Dark right here. I fire off an Ice Beam. That does way too much. I get the Freeze, but it really doesn't make a difference because I outspeed him anyway. I outspeed him anyway next turn and can kill him with another Ice Beam. At this point, he's just trying to rack up Life Orb Residual on me. So that way he could just pick me off with the... Uh I go for our Bug Buzz there to guarantee the kill. He just go. He's just trying to rack up life or residual on me, so he could just pick me off of Verizion Quick Attack. So that's gonna. That's essentially the game. He's just gonna go into Verizion here. Pick me off with the Quick Attack. Cause I don't think Lunge is priority. He picked me off with the Quick Attack. I didn't have Lunge on this anyway. And now I could. Now my hope is to go into Tapu Koko. And really just, well, then these, well, Nido Queen does wall this thing, because I don't have HP Ice. My set on this Coco was U-Turn, Nature's Madness, Thunderbolt, and Dazzling Gleam. He goes to Quick Attack. I don't think it kills me. Yeah, it doesn't kill me. I'm able to kill him with Dazzling Gleam here. So I am able to preserve some differential by being able to go for the Dazzling Gleam there on this, on this Girl Scout. So Verzion does end up dying. As now he goes into the Nido Queen, and the Nido Queen is just going to be able to clean up this game. I try to go for a Nature's Madness here. Just maybe get some damage on this thing. So maybe Muck can pick it off and I only lose 1 0. But there was really nothing I could do once Muck got burned. So now I just go into Muck. And that's essentially just going to be GG. Unfortunately. Of course, the last Mon that dies is the Mon that has GG in the name. I think it'll take. I took that better than I thought I would, actually. Knock off my strongest attack on this thing. I don't have Shadow Sneak. My fourth move on Muck was Memento, because I was going to hopefully like just Memento into my Lilligant or my Faramosa. Really nothing I could do. I just got flat out out prepped by Leo. But that's why he was UCL Season 2 champion. I believe I did give him a good fight. I 100% believe I gave him a good battle, though. So that was week one of the Ice TBA. We, we go down 2-0, but not a bad loss. Not a bad loss. We were facing one of the top battlers in the league, though. So I'd say good showing from, good showing from his end. Really great showing from his end. Good showing from my end, too. He had the prep, though. I had matchup, but he had the prep to counter that matchup. Next week, we take on Isolate, I believe his name is, and his Great Lake Greninjas. So hopefully we could turn things around, get a nice W in that one. So Spanik out. I will see you guys next time. Peace.